Now, everyone has a vague memory of this because this is nothing that really got a lot of attention. It was something that just sparked a a controversy out of nowhere, out of nothing. It was used for promotion by both sides. Um, it led to something really personal happening that a lot of people didn't know that was going on. Uh, this is the truth behind the beef between Eminem and Everlast. Now, Eminem was basically just getting started in the game or whatever, but before then, House of Bane was uh, so MC basically uh, Everlast is just an MC rapper from you know the West Coast or wherever he's from, and Ice T saw him and liked the guy and. He came out with an album, it sucked. And they's like, man, why don't you come out with a group? So they portrayed to be from Ireland. Came in with this, you know, jump around. And next thing you know, the House of Pain started portraying like they was from Boston. And Boom, shalak, lock, boom. Shamrocks and shenanigans. So they were looked at as the Irish hip-hop group. Now, their success didn't last long. And years down the road, after doing all this touring and sitting out and, you know, doing crazy stuff, you have Everlast come out with Whitey Ford Sings the Blues. He was no longer Everlast. He's Whitey Ford. He's playing an acoustic guitar and electric guitars and singing. So now country rap record. This is it. He sold three million copies. He was known as a hit. He was back. But the big story is he had a major heart attack and came back. He was on television. They made a good story behind it. That was the promotion for his album. And note, he sold over three million records. Now, let's move forward. After selling three million records, he now comes out with his follow-up, Eat at Whitey's. Now, Eat at Whitey's is definitely not a album that's going to go anywhere. You know, Eat at Whitey's has got a few commercial success. It was gold, but the beef with Eminem basically killed that out. Even though it got great reviews, the album was tanked due to the beef with Eminem. Why? Because Eminem in one album became the uh, white rapper sensation. So now mm, sorry about that. So now Everlast is using this script that Eminem had passed him in the hall and didn't give him any attention and when they was on the show and he was just going to congratulate them and them. This was used to, as Everlast wanted to do, to promote his album, Eat at White's. 
and get some publicity going back in his way. He was getting ready to bait Eminem into a battle because Eminem is a battle rapper. He knows that. He wants some attention on his album. And this is the controversy that's going to bring it up. So now he's working with dilated people. So Sean Price and all those guys, you know, over there who, who dope, you know, they could rap. So they got Everlast on the track. And then he starts dissing Eminem on the track. And you know, when he's going over the situation, both guys have different accounts as to what happened. You know, Eminem was like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I don't even remember it. You know, and he's like, he acted like he was too big and cocky to speak. To you. Now, anyway, Eminem decides this is a good look to go. This is a good look ago. You see what I'm saying? This was a good look a long time ago. Eminem said, I'm going to use this in my favor. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to take this and run with it. So what M did... was take it and run with it. M took it and came out with a song called I Remember. Now at this time, he's working with D12 on D12's album. And right now, Eminem is the biggest artist in the world. <laughs> now, let me get this straight so you guys understand. Eminem and Nelly were the two top selling rap artists at this time. Yes, Nelly. Both guys sold 10 million records on a second album. So both of those guys were selling 10 million records. Nelly and Eminem. Nelly's broke, Eminem's rich. Explain that. But anyway, moving forward <laughs> with this situation, He's the biggest artist in the world. And now MTV is promoting this. They're every every day on TRL and all these pop shows. They got Eminem on it every day. He's doing interviews. He's talking about the beef. They interviewing Everlast. And what's his name? Lawler or whatever. He's up there with that long, drunk, droopy hair. Promoting this. When rappers couldn't get no juice. Next thing you know, you got Everlast listening to this and it's like, oh, he's coming out with a new song, Whitey's Revenge. Which was only on the uh, uh, website. You had to go to their web <laughs> website to listen to Re Whitey's Revenge. And that's when he talks about Eminem's daughter. He talked about Haley. He talked about his mother. He talked about all these different things on the song. Telling Eminem he got to check his kid for DNA. And, and then, you know, he just basically says, I'm not wasting no more time on you, Eminem. That's it. So after that, Eminem and D12 responded with the song Quitter. Eminem took the song, I remember that this song responds back to Whitey Ford's song that he did with Dilated and put, put that on the S on you single. The single that they decided shouldn't even be on the album. So that's Paul Rosenberg 
saying we just not gonna go with this single. It's just not. We don't want to lose any fans, Eminem. We like purple pills. So, but this was the first official single. Originally. So I remember, which wasn't looked at as a very good disc record, it just faded away. Now, Quitter came along. That was much, much better. And then the second half, it turns into Hit Em Up. And then he says, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I promise. That's it. I'm done. So when the whole song was over, they dissed dilated pupils, which got dilated to respond and evidence, you know, and all those guys over there, they came back with the search for Bobby Fischer. And they ended up coming back and squashing that situation. Because Dilated and Eminem never should have been involved in the beat. You know, they were all respected. They, you know, they all respected each other. So the thing is, is that DJ Lethal, who was the former DJ for Everlast, was there when Eminem was recording the song. And he was in the group Limp Biscuit. And they go over there and Lip Biscuit, Fred Durst, and all those guys who were cool with Eminem. And he's giving Lethal all these props on the record. And then Lethal is over here, goes on stage and starts talking about, he's over there with, with uh, Lip Biscuit and talking about Everlast, he's like, Eminem could out-rap him, but if they had a fist fight, Everlast would beat Eminem's ass. Even though it might be true. <laughs> you know, now you just, it's like, what What are you doing? <laughs> you was with me when I recorded the song. Talking about, I'm glad you dissing him. So now, that Devil's Night is getting ready to come out, the actual album, Here's another hidden track on the album called Girls, where he's dissing Lint Biscuit and <laughs> Everlast and DJ Lethal mainly. So this one song ended the beef. Have you noticed that they never responded? We never heard a response from Fred Durst or nobody from Lint Biscuit. And you want to know why you didn't? Because Fred Durst was going to take Eminem to court and said Eminem was threatening his life. And he was going to have to go to court. And he could possibly lose his kid because he was involved in a situation already with the records. You know, with the thing that happened with the situation there. So if this was a serious thing, he was talking about how he was going to sue Eminem. Like, I'm suing him. And, you know, he's threatening my life. He's getting ready talking about pressing criminal charges against Eminem. So Eminem left that alone. That's what ended that beef. Him and Lethal and Fred Durst from Little Biscuit was supposed to be on the record. But at the last moment, Fred Durst pulled out of the record. So he went and did, Eminem did the record without them. So that's what, that's what caused a lot of that to just cease. But new things arise, arose out of that with uh, Limp Biscuit. So the everlasting thing just went on to Limp Biscuit. And that's just basically how that went. And Everlast's career just started going. <clears throat> Warner Brothers bought out Tommy Boy Records. <laughs> you know, he came out with another album, White Trash Beautiful, and that didn't do anything. And 
He started teaming back up with House of Pain, and and it just wasn't going anywhere. And the beef just staled out, and things fell at the wayside, and that's just was it. That was this beef was like cut and dried. <laughs> A lot of people start getting involved in beefs because of it. All of this was done for promotion. Promotion. All this promotion turned into commotion, and then you had everything put in motion. This is how it all starts. Now, what is the key ingredient ingredient that we learned here? That all these guys were selling records without the beef. Whitey Ford sold three million records without any beef. Once he started trying to use some beef to sell his records, now you made the fans have to choose between you and Eminem, who at this point is the hottest artist in the world. Guess what? You lose. So on that note, I'm out. Don't forget to support the page. Hit me up on the Cash App. I am Carcino on the Cash App. Or click the link in the description box where it says donate. Donate to the page. Leave me a message. Make some suggestions for videos. We do listen to the suggestions. So please do so. And I'm out.